Will a master's or a PhD help you get into medical school? Does it actually increase your chances of acceptance? What about a post back degree, something like that? Will it actually help? It's more of, you know, a depends. And I'm going to tell you what I think in a second. Uh, and we'll come to a conclusion in a second. But in case you haven't watched any of these episodes, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Beruz Momeni. I'm the CEO and founder here at BMO. And welcome to another episode of the Admissions Expert One Question Podcast. If you haven't watched any of these, I normally take one topic, slice and dice it many different ways, try to give the best tips we've learned from helping tens of thousands of other students so you don't make the same mistake we've seen some of the other students make and have access to as much information so that lack of information is not the reason you get rejected because I truly believe that everyone should have the same access to all the same information. So let's go right into it. Will a master's or PhD help you get into medical school? Does it uh, increase your chances of acceptance? Well, yes or no in the following way. If you think just getting a master's or a PhD, and I'm going to make it straightforward, very simple for you, a master's or PhD just automatically is going to increase your chances of acceptance. You're sadly mistaken and you're going to waste a lot of time. For example, if you're um, a lot of schools still look at your MCAT and GPA for undergraduate studies. So that's not going to solve that. Remember that if it's below a certain level of like, you know, place where you cannot fix it. Like if you got a 2.0 in undergrad, I'm not really sure how a PhD is going to help that. Seriously, it, it may not really help that. It's maybe some schools, again, whether this is the right thing or not is another story. So what can it possibly help then? It's not going to help your MCAT. You still got to write the MCAT. Your undergraduate GPA should still be something of value, can be something ridiculously low. What can it help with? Well. If you never had a research experience, well, it does count as a research experience, one. Two, if you never did any presentation or conferences, it will help with that. Three, if you had a publication, it counts towards that. Yes, it does all of those things. So all those extracurricular activities related to research, for sure. Some schools, four, some schools give you a few points for having a master's or PhD. Yes, not all, most don't. But most importantly, it will help with your maturity the maturity to understand where your weaknesses are, the maturity to plan in advance for applications and don't apply last minute, the maturity to spend the right amount of time on your applications, on your MCAT, on your uh, CASPER test, on your interviews, that's what it gives you. And the maturity to show up at an interview and sound like a mature adult, where it may not be the case for you if you don't have a PhD, just because life experience, right? From the time from undergrad to PhD, it could be eight additional years right? You're just going to be more mature. And of course, you're going to do better than someone who is like eight years younger than you, four years younger than you, even two years younger than you. So it definitely helps with that. But so it helps in certain ways, but not in the ways you probably thought it would. And I don't necessarily recommend it if you don't actually like research because it's very hard and it may be very draining and you will take a spot from another person who just want to do research and that's what they want to do. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't just go to a master's just because I want to go to medical school. No, there should be some other reason. At least you should have some level of uh, respect and interest in that research topic. So that was my two cents about uh, getting a master's or a PhD. But what about a post -bac? post bacs are a little bit different. They're essentially another undergraduate degree. They sometimes do help because they will help elevate your GPAs. They will help sometimes, depending on what program you choose, they may actually help you. They may have, sometimes they may have help with extracurricular, MCAT, blah, blah, all that stuff that may help you out. So post is a little, little bit different. And sometimes uh, programs have partnerships with other medical schools, sometimes their own medical school, and it does help. However, master's and PhD, for the most part, not they will help, but not the way you thought they would. And I hope I cleared this up for you. That was all I wanted to talk about today in this uh, shorter episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you did, go ahead and share it with a friend who may be mistaken about why they should do a master's or PhD so you could help them avoid that mistake if it's in, for the wrong reasons. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section and I hope to talk to you in the next episode. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.